Okay, so we teach. Uh, thank you for coming because um, during the pandemic, everyone is, you know, not depressed, but like everyone is like lonely, you know. And Kumo is one of my uh, stress relievers. But no, um, so yeah. Um, Siguro mo may nakamang speech kung tanda tayo. Daming siksa. <laughs> Guys, hindi ako singer ha. Ito may warning lang. Hindi ako singer. Um, bahala na kayo. Mare <laughs> 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 so, chart. Ayan. And welcome nga pala everyone kung sino pa yung from the States. Welcome to Vancouver! So, we na joke na ka ba? This is my first time on singing the stage with this crowd. Medyo shy pa. Okay lang, parang hindi stream lang. Streaming lang. Hi everyone! And of course, hindi yung boss natin. So, you know, parang ayun. Yeah, pero go, go, go na to.
I need one more person up here. Who's gonna do it? Come on. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more. I'm not starting this until I get five. No one wants a hundred thousand points? Be easy, be easy, be easy, be easy. Go. There's one simple rule to this game. There are no rules. You say whatever you want. Uh, is there children in here? Okay, you say almost anything you want. <laughs> and then uh, as long as it's PG friendly. Do we have earphones? No, we don't. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. Should we start off with BZ or should we have for last? Save mine for that. Okay, 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 okay. All right, my friend, tell me your name. Tell me where you're from. Jojo. Uh, from Surrey, BC. Oh. Everybody give it up for Surrey, BC! Yeah. Alright, we need to give a look into this crowd. Pick one special person in this crowd. Pretend you're talking to that one person. And let them know how you feel. I hope you know CPR. Because you take my brain. Look at the Kaleeks. Look at the Kaleeks, she's turning red. That's so cute. Oh my god. Oh my god. Mom? about to move to Toronto. Uh -oh. My blessing for my tita. Oh. I'll, I'll let tita judge this one. Depends on the point she drops. Hey! Would you, would you drop a Yamashita for Tessa? Yes. Oh sure, for, of course. <laughs> Tessa go live, we'll see you. Alright, we don't know who you are, but uh, for people that don't, tell us who you are and tell us where you're from. Hello, I'm Tiki Mom from LA. Good to see you, everybody! Yeah. So, my big up line would be, uh, what's your two minutes? 
I think, I think, I think what Gita was trying to say was uh, I, I, I was told to follow my dreams. What's your Google username? <laughs> Napakaganda naman itong mga babaeng ire. <laughs> so, you know, when I was in school, it's all about getting the A. But right now, I'm going to talk about getting the F. Oh, 
<laughs> but I think we got a clear winner. Ladies and gentlemen, 100,000 coins for our main, main, main lady, the Canadian. Thank you all for coming. Right. Thank you. Oh, and uh, I don't know who you're talking to, but I'll each other. LDRs are fun, man. Fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to play another game. Right now, I'd like to call up. Oh, I have to talk to someone real quick. Oh, oh okay. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, in a surprise turn of events, I'd like to call up the tallest person in the room, the father of all of this, the greatest of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, the one person you want to take a picture with in this entire thing, Mr. James Rumor! Canada, I think of a lot of things of, of the start of Kumu. When we first started Kumu 2017, over four years ago now, uh, Roland called me when I was getting off of work. I was school principal then. And he called me, and then the only request he asked. So when I was talking to Roland in 2017, the only request he asked for me about Kumu, it wasn't even a thought yet, he said, hey James, I know you're busy doing your school administrator being a principal at, at Sacramento High School. And then all of a sudden when he called me, he asked, hey James, do you want to do something to protect Filipinos around the world? And I'm at I said yes. Whatever that is, Rolf, I don't know. You're going to be an educator, so I'll just focus that. When we have Filipinos around the world, I automatically said yes. And I didn't know what to say. Love the experiences and we love the relationships we built here. 
But now, it's leveling that up.
and then we list them listen to the users, we listen to an intern, and that user and intern follows the social live stream. The only different ways now can do interviews and they help content that us. A user was on social for dinner and said, hey, you should you guys should do PD. Guess what? We do PD. Because of the sound, because the users who know the app. Okay? Me. You can ask people on my staff. I have over 200 people on my staff. Every single one of them are all power users. I don't care if you went to this school or that school or, or my family's this or I did this. I don't care what your resume says. But I, mean, I look for people who have the skills to, 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 to uh, work for us, but have to know the app. And that's the beautiful thing about these events is because you look around, there's nothing but users here. Right? And that's what I want to scale up. And I need your help. And that's the only way apps can get better is to hear your, hear your input into what our next generation is. I personally don't want people from the Philippines to tell us what's doing in Canada. You know what I'm saying? I don't want people, you know, that don't know the app to tell people from Google Canada to do these sort of things. No, I don't want that. I don't want people from, from this base here I'm looking at right now to tell me the next idea, to tell us the next feature we should have. Right? Now we have Kumu Middle East. You know we have Kumu Europe. They're lobbying for events too. In the last what, two months, maybe on me. Yeah. In the last two months, help Akumu out by creating over 200 Mango Level Seven users. So clap it up for Arlene and Tommy from Akumu, Canada. Say. 
Clap it up for the one down team at Kumi USA. Woo! The thing that Kumi USA team has done has been a practice field with a lot of what's going next. Kumi Canada is the next country where I want a content structure programs just for Kumi Canada alone. The same way Kumi USA does it is the same way I want Kumi Canada to do it in your own way. A similar structure because it's very organized, very, very uh, brings, brings the details and deliverables very fast. So I really want that to happen pretty soon. So even with the content, Google Canada, you have so much content out here. You have so many great users out here that can rock the mind. Can, can you know? I'm just, yeah, I'm thinking about, think about Marty Rice, I'm thinking about Air Core. I'm thinking about Roslog. I'm thinking about Chia and Post of uh, Filipino uh, for Fridays. I'm thinking about. Flip and, and, and his team, you know, cultivate relationships with each other. And I'm seeing so much greatness here in Canada. It needs to be explored more. It needs to be pushed out more. Okay. Um, that's it for me today. I really, 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 you know, it's a dream come true to see this many people here supporting Kumu. Um, I know for sure that when I go back to Manila in a few weeks, I'm going to be talking about Kumu Canada for a little bit. I've seen how it's not big as the United States, no. But how are we, like, it's, a, it's a three or four right now. It's like Kumu Europe and Kumu Canada goes like this with the numbers, right? And I believe that Kumu Canada would be really up here as the, you know, number three country that's really supporting uh, the Kumu app, right? Number one's going to be number two, let's see. Number three is Kumu European countries and Kumu Canada, right? So I know that Kumu Canada is the United Front will really um, excel this rest of year. Um, you're not. I appreciate everyone for coming out. Um, please talk to me after this event as well. I think there's a lot of great things and more things to showcase as well. That's about it. But before I leave, on your Kumu app, who's the oldest Kumu member here? Staff can't play. All right. Uh, I'm going with uh, anybody from 2017. 2017 in the house. 2018 in the house. Omni's one. Can't play the. This one? Uh, 2018 users. You got proof? You have proof? Please check 2019. January 2019. February 2019. March 19. April 19. August 19. November 19. Anybody in November, uh, October 19? May 20. What? May. May 20. Thank you. Grub, you're a winner. One winner. I got you. Right. And who's the new? Who's the? June what? 2020. June 19. All right. You two are winners. Okay. Third winner. Who? Who has the? Who's the youngest baby? Who are you here? Okay. Faith. All right. Cool. Faith. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, that is it for me. Please, uh, if you have any questions or you want to talk about Kumu, after this, I'll be around and watch the whole presentation here. All right. Thank you so much. Kumu Canada.
is representing community teams here in, here in uh, Canada. Give it up. I'm going to bring up Leo from One Down. Yeah, I'm going to check out those sneakers. They're phenomenal. I'm going to bring up Mr. Jay Cabrera. Jay Cabrera, you're over there. Tell us who is from Kumu. And the one and only Queen of Kumu, USA. <laughs> We're about to witness her wedding ceremony later. Ms. Alyssa Alvea. which is a podcast that aims to bridge the gap in cultural identity with the next generation. We got on Kumu on March 25th, 2021 because of DJ Marlino from Heavy Rotation. So that's why we're here today. Hello. I registered my account on 
2021, yeah, February 21, 2021, and then, um, yeah, I had content on there called Connecting Kappa, which I uh, hosted with uh, Jessica Orsovici, which is a part of uh, Kumu 3D, um, yeah, and my whole timeline for that one was, I was, everyone's crushing on Tom Bayan, <laughs> so I'm crushing on Bayan, but yeah, I also am a it's going to make noises again. But okay, first things first, I want to ask everybody on this panel, how do you use Kumu? Well, she turned away. Okay, fine. I'll ask her to instead. I use it as a creeper, but I'll have to pass it over to you. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the correct answer. She's honest. Yeah, yeah very honest. Uh, yeah, for me, how I used Kumu, well, I was first on there with my sister for Gales, California. Um, that really introduced us into Kumu. Um, how I used it, I kind of just got taken under the wing of grub life over there, back in the corner yeah. I post up. Um, one day I was scrolling and I heard English. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, these are my people. <laughs> But also, yes, so it was very comforting being taken into Costa, and I um, I hope, hope sometimes the R and B nights, and yeah, just connecting through that and like having more connections through not just who that as well, and then yeah, and yeah, I was also on Rosie Log as well, and I was featured on the North Side with there probably X. So, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been kind of fun. No, no. Oh, just Creeper, remember? <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> so, I, uh, I used to move primarily as a platform to support other Filipinos and Filipino creatives in general. I think um, one of the coolest parts is every time I meet an artist, um, they always have this mission to bring visibility to the Filipino community. And I think there is no better place to do that than Kumu. When you think of the community that exists here out in the diaspora and then also in the Philippines, you know, it's the perfect platform for us to connect deeper, you know, with our culture and our community. So some of the fun things that we've been able to do is like work with artists like Major Rafael, Melissa Polinar, Ruby Abar, who's going to be here tonight, and really strategize how do we really grow their community and really allow for our community to find these artists who are pushing us forward. Um, I do host my podcast, The Cheese Peace Cancel, um, every Monday. And one of the recent things that we're doing um, in Community of America is Pop Olympics, which is this close campaign where we're bringing, you know, 30 Filipino podcasts to compete it out um, in this campaign for them to get this prize called Pod Machine where it actually edits their podcast for them. So we're strategizing how do we continue to support, you know, Kumu creators and creators in the community utilizing this platform. Um, and reflexively, what also happens is, you know, people around the world get to meet other folk and, and connect, and deeper things happen because of this app. And so really grateful for that, and that is how I use Okay, so I used to um, to express my creativity. I've, I've had uh, different live stream, creative live stream, like my Kumu, Kumu cooking started with me, and then there's also Kumu Serie, like original, authentic um, topics and uh, series there. And also, if I'm not live streaming, I, I'm connecting with other Kumu users. I'm always in the app, uh, like, like every day, yeah. So all my working hours, like I, I'm in Kumu, except if I'm working, working. But um, I'm always in Kumu, connecting people, connecting to people, and then also helping them out with their questions and also in their lives and giving them some idea, uh, ideas. They come to me, like, you know, sometimes the title, what, what the title of their life should be, and stuff like that. So I love to connect. Uh, and uh, Kumu is my home. I'm, I've always been here, now. So I, I, my, I primarily use Kumu for live streaming. Uh, I do a Friday night um, live stream series called Friday Night Hour with J. Um, midnight, so midnight to 2 a.m. Eastern, 9 to 11 Pacific. 
here in the Philippines, it's noon to two on Saturday. Even though it's called Friday night now, it's Saturday in the Philippines. Um, and I also do a Sunday night uh, show called Indie Vibe in the day, which I do on Sundays and Wednesdays. Highlight independent music from around the world, Filipino artists included. Um, Friday night hour, uh, I use as a, it's like a, almost like a free flow talk show where I have one or two guests every week, independent artists or creatives, again, from around the globe, uh, you know, included. And for me, uh, spreading the word uh, of the app, um, whenever I am live, I do multiple streaming. So Kumu is in there, I do IG, I do Twitch, uh, and sometimes I'll do TikTok. So I have four devices running at the same time. But I always make sure that on IG, on TikTok, on Twitch, that I am mentioning Kumo, telling them to download it, have to check it out because it's not, it's it's an app like no other. Um, even just the, I call it the, the Kumoverse, like the universe of Kumu, when you're in the app, honestly, streaming on all these other apps, it's an experience, again, unlike any other, which is awesome. And the most important part for me is, you know, the beauty of it is, is Filipino culture. It comes from us. I mean, it's like, man, I, I've got to shout out DJ Rock Rock because he's the one that, that brought me to Kumu. DJ Rock Rock, you here? <laughs> um, but yeah, honestly, it's, it's been a great experience so far. But live streaming primarily, um, and I do singing lives as well, and the, the community on Kumu is so supportive. Um, and again, James, you're right, it doesn't, you don't have to be Filipino to get on the app. Uh, and being from Toronto and originally from New York City, you know, the whole multicultural aspect of where I grew up and where I'm living now, it's, it's global. You know, the app is truly global. And that's one of my primary things with what I do is try to push that message as well. You know, push the message of not only just the Filipino culture, but we are, we are such a welcoming community. Like, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be Filipino. But you know what? To enjoy the app, just get on there. Download it and, and get in there and explore it. So. I think the question for me is like, what do I not miss Kumu for? Because what I love about Kumu is how effortless it is. I mean, for a lot of us, when you wake up, we open the app, we, you know, we check on what's going on, who's on live stream. When we're going to sleep, we're saying goodnight, or you're falling asleep on a thumbbine, right? Everything is happening on Kumu. I mean, for me, Kumu's my therapy. Uh, like James said, you come as, come as you are. For me, I was always questioning my Filipino identity or, you know, how do I make more friends? How do I put myself out there? I'm not a singer, but I got a VA. I'm singing karaoke. I got those lights on. You know, I got people spamming me. And, you know, it really hypes you up. And to be able to give that same love to so many people, and you know how it feels when people drop those gifts on you, support you, follow you, not only on Kumu, but on your Instagram, on your Facebook, when you get that number, when you meet up in real life and you're like, yo, like it feels like we've known each other for so long, but we just literally met. That feeling, that, that's what I live for. And uh, I use Kumu for all of that for, as my therapist and I'm having a bad day. I go on Kumu and someone on there is going to make me smile. If I, you know, I'm struggling with, uh, what am I going to eat today? I called Rob Live. He's already live. Grab what do I eat? What's good? If I'm looking for some good music, there's hella DJs on there. You want to find any talent. You want to know what's going on trending. Uh, for me, it's, Kuma's given me so many opportunities. I've always been shy at talking. I know it may seem like, what, really? No, seriously, I've always been a shy person where where I always struggle to be myself and find people that accepted me as me. And uh, thank you to Kuma because it has given me so many opportunities. I was featured on Cosmo PH to talk about my K-drama, K-pop fangirl diaries. I was in SB19's music video. Uh, you know, and, and that's, that's the crazy thing is Kuma gives opportunities for you. So don't change yourself. Be you because you'll find that tribe that vibes with you. You know, you may not think it's, you know, for me, post up game always intimidated me. Okay, you just gotta try to everyone. Be you are. Don't change for nobody. And use this app and continue to just, you know, you don't need to go out there and be like, hey, use Kumu. Because you know what? You yourself advocating and being you already is a reflection of how dope Kumu is. So just do that. I'm gonna be honest with you, one of my favorite things to do is jump on a stream with Tessa and make her go, HOY! That's my absolute favorite thing to do. But the two things I got from that, number one, Jay has the sexiest voice on the planet, oh my god. And number two, shout out to all the people with uh, burner accounts and the people who watch people on laptops. You know who you are, you creeps. <laughs> you know exactly who you are. 
All right. My next question is for Tessa, Ami, and Leo. Um, how have you built community on the app? Oh, straight to me. Thank you. Um, how have I built community on the app? Uh, you know, like James said, being a power user and then being able to step into what I feel is, uh, this is my place, I'm in my moment where I feel confident in myself, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm loving everything. Being able to be a part of Kumu USA's journey, Kumu North America, um, how I build communities, you know, literally getting together, finding, you know, talking to people on the ground. I love, I love looking into this room and I've talked to almost every single person in here. Whether I know you or not, we're going to get to know each other today. And that's where it starts, is building these relationships and seeing, hey, how can I support you? Or what do, what makes you happy? What's your passions? You know, those types of things. Uh, looking at Kumi USA, uh, Post Up Gang, we want to do R&B nights. This started as a chill, or I think so. There's like 10 of us singing uh, in studio. Then it became this whole party and next month we're throwing uh, R&B nights in a whole summer patio outside live we have a uh, hello artist flying in for this and it's literally here in the community seeing what they all want to do what makes us happy because at the end of the day we're going to want to do things and enjoy so how can we bring community together and use the app not only online but offline so literally it's just hearing the community and starting there Okay, so on my side, like I'm really also shy, and I'm um, thankful for Kumu for because this is the app that I use that I, you know, I discovered so much that I wasn't doing before. Like, you know, I don't really sing, but now I sing. I started to learn how to play the guitar and stuff like that. And so, how do I build a um, relationship with others? Just, just like what they're saying, just be yourself. Um, be authentic. Um, I've always said that Kumu is an app with a heart. So I use my heart. I talk to people, you know, like just getting to know them. Um, there's there's some here that I don't know before. For example, we have Glenn. He's new. And C is here also. So, yeah, um, so, so those relationships, um, like VIA yeah, and everyone, like I've established uh, also friendship, not only in Kumu, but we go outside Kumu and that's what we are um, looking for authentic, be authentic um, yourself, authentic relationship, being true to everyone also, so that's basically how I build um, getting to know them, what they wanted uh, what they enjoy um, in the live stream, what they enjoy doing so, you know, just, just, just talk about it um, and try to listen, yeah, everyone has something to say, so be a friend. I'm be a friend. Um, yeah, I mean, ditto to what they both said. I'm also very shy. Um, but I, I think the other thing about it is we all have things that we care about, you know, things that drive us as human beings or as Filipinos. And so when I think of the question of how we build community using who, um, one of my most recent projects that we had done with Kumu USA and one down is this event called So Bakla. And I think, um, you know, this was an event where we brought together the Filipino and LGBTQ plus community. And I can't think of any other event where we've had both communities um, really there to celebrate what it means to be LGBTQ plus. And I think, you know, I was talking to some folks in the media and they were saying, Leo, if you use that term Bakla, like that's going to put off some people. You know, that's going to poke them in the wrong way. And I said, let it. Because that term has been used so often as an insult, as a way to shame us. Um, and I think this was the perfect opportunity to bring together people in the community, Kumu users, um, and then nonprofit partners and really explore what does it mean to celebrate who we are, especially during Pride Month. And so Kumu was this amazing opportunity and platform where you know, we fundraised money on the live stream for a nonprofit organization. We brought together a drag show. We invited allies and people from within the community and just had a really good night and got super drunk. Um, and so, you know, it, it was just an amazing community building experience. And I think, you know, we're very thankful for Kumu um, for giving us the opportunity to build spaces like this. He's absolutely right. Everybody's absolutely right. This mic is broken. That's okay. Uh, my next question is for Leah, Archie, and Chia. 
Um, how do you find the community outside of Kumu, and how do we migrate those people into the end? How we use that is, well, we incorporated communities around us, vendors that we always have relationships with, and yeah, we got one. We got a, we got a new user, that's it. Yeah, we got a baby user out of there, so that's because of our commitment and what we can bring to Vancouver and to Kumu and what else we can push moving for. And also we have we have had a few former guests that were on Kumu USA and by building that relationship with the listeners with getting to know some of the Kumu users that were in Sahala Rea and it's really getting to teach them or let them know that this is a way for you to connect with your fellow Filipino. You know, how do you want to connect with your Kapwa? Do you want to build by a Nihan? Where's the first way to start? It's by downloading the app, right? It's free. It's owned by Filipinos, made by Filipinos. How empowering is that to be able to have that in your hand where you can connect with somebody in the Philippines, you can connect with somebody from Australia, you can connect with somebody from the UK, right? It's such a beautiful thing. But it's a, a, a new age way to be able to uh, close the gap um, despite it as diasporic communities around the world. Um, and obviously, Mom Dan has also done a really beautiful job doing that. So that's very exciting. And we're scratching up with that because of the connections that I made on Kumu, I was able to bring in Kidflip, Byron, and also this guy from Australia to come host on our podcast. So it's, it's, it's those connections that bring us stronger and much more than going even more into the. Yeah, well, you know, when we talk about community outside of Kumu, um, so what I, what I try and do when I'm doing my live streams, I am live streaming on multiple platforms and again using Twitch, using IG, using TikTok to try and migrate some of those users over onto to the Kumu app. Now, um, I've been able to, to do quite a few every time I'm live, and then I'll see them as I'm streaming, they're popping up on the Kumu stream. I'm like, yes. Um, so the feedback that I've been getting from um, some of the people that follow me on the other platforms, migrating you know, onto the Kumu platform, they are enjoying um, the experience so far. Um, you know, for me, when I do my live streams, if I'm not doing a singing live, it's all about other independent artists, right? Because as an independent artist myself, it's hard enough as it is on the daily grind. So what I try and do is, you know, where I can help um, hopefully bring eyes and ears to some of these artists that may not have a chance to get heard in these, you know, with, with these new followers and users. You know, it's a different demographic, just a different area of the globe, uh, but giving them some more exposure. You know, that's the fun part for me. And then getting them to get on the app and then live streaming themselves. Um, there's just one particular artist that stands up. His name is Ali Tuhill out of Australia. And I remember when I had him on my Friday night hour and I kept talking about Kumu, he was asking, he kept asking, what's, what is that? So at, during the live, I'm explaining what that app is about. So he then signed up, and then he started live streaming on the app. And he was messaging me, going like, "Man, this is like unlike any experience he's had because he would usually just stream on, on Instagram." Now I will say this: with Kumu, what I love about it is you don't get caught off if you're live streaming and you're playing music and you're, you know, maybe you're doing covers, whatever. They will never your stream will never get caught off. Which I don't know if, if you guys are on IG still. You're noticing there. You're getting you might be getting notifications like, "Hey, your video is blocked." Is this or that? The other day, I got a notification on IG that one of my videos was blocked with my own song, and it said, "Your video is being blocked as you show out by Jay Ferrer." I'm like, "That's me. Like, why is my own video getting blocked when I'm actually playing my music?" Right. So that's that's another piece of the puzzle there when we're talking about outside community trying to bring them in. 
for artists in general that love doing covers and mixing in with originals. And even when I do my indie vibe energy, I'm playing two hours all independent music, and that's where I'm also getting cut off, right? So there's, you know, there are listeners that don't get to experience some of this music from around the globe because a certain app is cutting me off, but that doesn't happen on people, right? So that's part of what I what I try and do with independent artists that aren't familiar with the platform is to come on to and just try it out. Come take a look at hang out. You know, because again, they're they're being themselves, but not having any restrictions and be and truly being able to be themselves is is, is a godsend. No, for real, honestly, um, just who would it be as like a puzzle? Right? Everybody's a puzzle piece and we kind of just kind of figure out where we all fit as a community, as a whole. Now everybody did it right on the head, like you talked about your story you grew up and you're like, oh, your neighbor's just going too. Right? But like we're all finding out where we are, so everybody just being themselves, that's really important. You know? But uh, I have an open question for anybody. Why is Canada an important Filipino community to build? And by everyone, I mean Tessa. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, you know, from Canada is such an important place to build because, you know, even looking at the U.S. and what we've done and how many communities we've brought together, Canada's the next thing. I mean, Canada's literally, you, you vibe with the city. Even coming here, it's my first time coming to Vancouver, and I was like, yo, this is just like Los Angeles in a different way, a better vibe. Everyone is, also, I like that the sun doesn't set. It's like this cool, like, you can throw some mad outside, like, sunset park. Yeah, that's really nice. It's like 9.30 p.m., the sun is out still, and everyone is vibing outside. Uh, so for me, definitely, uh, Canada is the next big thing. I mean, we've seen how U.S. has grown, and it is something we are still figuring out. But if we can do the exact same thing here in Canada, what more? What more can we do? What exactly? So, to me, that's what. Yeah. <laughs> Um, statistically speaking, um, the Filipino community is one of the largest growing communities in Canada, period. Year by year, there's about you know tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of Filipinos who are immigrating to Canada, regardless of whether it's the Philippines or from somewhere else. And so in terms of you know where to find the people, um, the numbers are here and they're they, and they, they continue to grow. So even more so, there's such a large potential, um, large opportunity to be able to connect um, with like Filipinos across the nation. Um, and so it's really, really exciting to see where Canada kind of goes. So, yeah. Honestly, like I, I, I am looking forward to, you know, seeing how Canada, you know, continues to grow. Um, you know, when we talk about community, I grew up in um, Bruce Queens, New York, New York City. So I've only been in Canada since 2015, you know, the Toronto area. And, you know, for me, seeing, you know, there's a, there is a large Philippine community in Toronto, right? But sometimes once you're outside of that, then it kind of like, it dissipates. So it's, it's how do we, you know, continue to grow with that? You know, and how can we make Uber? I mean, this is only my third time out here. You know, so like, like Tessa said, like, it's cool out here. I love it out here. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. But, um, you know, it, it starts with us. You know, it starts with us as the users and, and what we do on our ends. And you as well. just, you know, continuing to, to use the platform, continuing to, to spread the word wherever and whenever we can. You know, because it, you have to start somewhere, right? So, and the only way for anything to happen is you have to start. Once you take that first step, you take another step, and then another, and then another, and you just keep going. So as long as we stay consistent and we keep, um, you know, promoting the way we can on our own platforms uh, and pushing and connecting with other power users, you know, globally, you know, um, to see what you guys are doing in the ecosystem, you know. So again, we're, we're, we're looking, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing where you know, where from Canada goes and you know, wherever I can have my comments. Yeah, okay, so um, we love uh, entertainment here in Canada. As you know, there's a lo there's lots of uh, concert in 
frontier aside from the U.S. and so uh, Canada is uh, sincere of U.S. and so I'm looking forward to uh, building um, from Canada here with uh, our USA here. Um, there's lots of Filipino um, wanting to connect with other Filipinos here. They just don't know how or where. And they use the concert as a way to connect to people. And so if we have Kumu and just just reach out to them, that we will be successful here uh, with the support of our Kumu, um, Kumu officers. Thank you. 100%. 100%. Okay. Um, the next few questions are going to be directed specifically to our U.S. friends. Uh, purely because as Canadians, we, we like Tessa said, we are the next wave, right? So as we grow into Canada, we have to, we have to know what to expect during that growth. So Tessa and Leo, um, what was the process of building this? Leo, do you want to start the poll? Uh, I think the process of it the process, literally for me, it's unlearning what you think is successful or is going to work and then being able to accept it to the next. Um, a lot of times it's all, you know, it's when you think of and everything, right? But there's so much more than that. I mean, even for me, I love hanging out with the Tita Kumu. I'm not going to lie. It is super dope. There is a whole other community out there. Not only the LGBT people, all the drag queens on Kumu, see all the Filipino communities on Kumu, not only just on Kumu, but you know, here in Los Angeles, here in Canada, and being able to go into those communities, but actually hear them out. Hear what do they want to do, what makes them happy, how can we support? Uh, when I think about this podcast campaign that we just had in November, I remember in October, I literally met with every single one of this podcast. Leo was meeting with me at first, but then he was happy. I can't do this talking, like, because I love to talk, you know me, I will meet with you all day, but um, editing. They couldn't find the time to go live and edit it. Well, fast forward to now, we have this amazing partnership with a podcast network Asia, all on Kumu, where you all you gotta do is stream every week on Kumu and you'll get your podcast edited for you for free. Thanks to Kumu. That was just based off the conversation where we heard out and they said, this is what we need help with. Now imagine if we went into every community and started there. So uh, that process, uh, you know, it takes a village. It takes a lot of people. And, uh, you know, really the creative genius and, you know, the mover and shaker of the business is my brother, Leo, because he says one thing and I'll make it happen. So, Leo, if you want to kind of give a little process here. Well, I think the, um, the process has grown. It, it really has been a learning experience. I think Tessa and I, at least as a team, we complement each other because I'm highly introverted and she's not. And she, she can talk to everyone, but I'm kind of more of a behind the is that in building community and building the process, which is very much so something that I think Kumu Canada can take, is understanding what is the pain point that we're trying to solve for our community. At least for the LGBTQ plus community, there was, you know, there was no space. There was no visibility for us to have this platform. When it came to the podcasters, it was like, editing takes up a lot of my time. Is it worth it? When it came 